What's up, my boy? How you doing? I'm doing good. How you been? Oh, you know me. I'm chilling. What you been up to? Uh, nothing much. You know, just listen to this new Beyonce album. Oh, yeah? How is it? It's actually pretty good. Yeah, man. good. Cool. I saw something about the, uh, the solar eclipse that happened. Apparently, uh, it's got something to do with Taylor Swift's album dropping. That's what I saw. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, right. Yeah. By the way, did you see that O.J. Simpson died? No way. Who did it? Cancer. Oh, jeez. I didn't see that. I saw the Joker 2 trailer. That was good. You should watch that if you haven't seen that yet. Yeah. We're live. We're live on air right now. Whew. Hello, everyone. I'm Ryan. And I'm Ryan, too. Welcome to the Suffolk Perspective. Where you could find out what's happening from Suffolk's point of view. Did you see the earthquake that happened last week? No, I didn't. I didn't. I was sleeping. Well, apparently not everyone felt it. But the East Coast was rattled with an earthquake and multiple aftershocks on Friday, April 5th. Experts say this was the largest earthquake on the East Coast in the past century. The 4.8 magnitude earthquake was strong enough to shake buildings from Boston to Philadelphia and leave many citizens stunned. The USGS reported that the epicenter for the earthquake was near White House Station, New Jersey, about 40 miles west of New York City. The earthquake was not a rarity for the New York area as smaller trembles go unnoticed throughout the year. It took 26 minutes for New York City officials to send out alerts to citizens letting them know what had happened. The New York Police Department said they had no reports of damages or injuries and several East Coast airports issued ground stops halting air traffic, but flights later resumed to normal. After just getting over the earthquake, on April 8th, millions in New York City and across the country had a chance to see the total solar eclipse as it moved over North America. Be honest, now who directly looked at the sun during the eclipse? I certainly hope the answer is no one, but with almost 30, 32 million people in the United States alone living in the path, there is bound to be a few. Expecting you viewed it safely with really fashionable eclipse glasses, it was surely something to witness. There won't be another like it in the US until 2044. It started just after 2 p.m. peak coverage reached a totality of 90% at 3.25 p.m. The last time there was a solar eclipse was in 2017, which didn't gain nearly as much atten as attention as this year's. This astronomical event sparked interest for everyone across the country. People came together everywhere to witness it, taking place for almost five minutes. There were crowds all over New York City, including Central Park and Midtown as well as gatherings from schools all over the area taking advantage of this science lesson. With all the crazy events we've been witnessing locally, we're gonna take a look at what's been happening at Suffolk right now. If you'd like to see where creativity shines, the spring semester play Head Over Heels will have performances from April 11th to the 21st, as well as the spring music concert series May 1st and May 2nd, along with the media festival April 25th. And of course, can't forget about the FinFest on May 1st. Some powerful happenings that have been taking place here are Take Back the Night on April 11th, the Out of the Darkness Walk on April 20th, and the Poetry Walk on May 1st. We would also like to take a second to congratulate the Spring 2024 graduates. We can't wait to see what you guys do next. We're gonna take a quick break to commercial and we'll be right back after these messages. Oh, hello. I saw you there, but I can fix that. I hid myself from you with our revolutionary invisibility cloak. With this wonderful piece of cloth, you can become 99% transparent. Just watch one of our customers skip class by using our cloak. You can use it to hide among your peers. You can use it to hide in plain sight, anywhere really, even to catch those who wronged you. Well, if you don't want to get caught stealing like that, you can watch the free masterclass and how to use your invisibility cloak. Invisibility cloak. You can't see what you never saw. Welcome back to the Suffolk Perspective. I'm your host, Holden Maloney. And I'm Charlize Vega. And now we have a topic that I really don't want to talk about. You want to do this one? I think you got this one. You want to rock, paper, scissors for it? Let's do it. Ready? Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. I guess it is pretty important. With the 2024 presidential election coming up in the fall, former president and presumptive GOP nomination Donald Trump has been holding campaign events across the nation rallying supporters. Meanwhile, 
President Biden has already mathematically clinched the Democratic nomination last month, paving the way for a rematch between him and former President Trump in November. With the election coming up this fall, it's essential to remember the steps on how to make sure your voice is heard on this election day. You can register in person at your county's Board of Elections or your local DMV. You can also register online by visiting vote.gov. Voting can take place in person on Election Day at your designated polling place or by mail. Carefully research the candidates and take the time to learn about them and their platforms. Remember, every vote counts, so make sure to have your voice heard in this pivotal election. Over to you, Charlize. Thanks, Holden. In other news, a former employee of the world's largest aerospace company, Boeing, was found dead on March 9th in Charleston, South Carolina. Police say 62-year-old John Barnett had died of a self-inflicted gunshot wound. The ex-employee was a former quality control manager at Boeing for over 30 years, who had been giving evidence in a whistleblower lawsuit case against the Boeing company just days before his death. Barnett had been giving information about Boeing's faulty aircraft regarding issues with oxygen systems and employee negligence at Boeing's factories, resulting in faulty parts going missing. This all comes after an incident in early January where a Boeing MAX 9 aircraft suffered from a mid-air blowout causing em an emergency landing. Last month, it was reported that the Justice Department had opened a criminal investigation on Boeing regarding the incident. The lawsuits and investigations against the Boeing company and their aircrafts have raised many concerns amongst Americans and people around the globe, as many more people are traveling come summer. Back to you, Holden. Thanks, Charlize. Coming up now, we're getting into world news. Getting into more about the U.S., the U.S. has been standing by on major conflicts happening in the Middle East, the most prominent of which is the ongoing feud between Israel and Palestine. While there has been a lot of catastrophic back and forth between the countries, most recently all eyes are on Rafah, a city on the south side of Gaza. Israel has threatened to do a ground invasion of the city within the next week, leading Biden to try and convince them not to. This comes after a heated conversation between Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and Biden last week. In the phone call, Biden requested a ceasefire um, after innocent people were killed during a bombing run in the city of Gaza. Although the Prime Minister claims that they want to move forward with the elimination of the Hamas group, there is a, a concern for the safety of innocent people in their plan. With new information coming out every day, it's hard to tell what will happen next. The Suffolk Perspective will be right back after a word from our sponsors. Everyone I know is on AOL. You've got mail. Instant messengers were ever You can have your self-esteem trampled by a kid from a whole other state. It's the way of the future. And customer service is always available. You can even choose your own crappy bowl. I'm reconsidering my purchase, but at least I'm connected. America Online. You've got mail. Call 1-800-4-ONLINE. Welcome back to the Suffolk Perspective. I'm your host, Charlize Vega. And I'm Ryan Fitzpatrick. So Charlize, what's going on with music lately? I'm glad you asked. So far, 2024 has been a huge year for music. There's a lot to keep up with, so here's the rundown of all the biggest releases. Some of the biggest names in the industry are continuing to bless the world with masterpieces, including Beyonce with Cowboy Carter, released on March 29th, making a dramatic shift to country while still making it her own. And of course, we have Taylor Swift releasing the Tortured Poets Department on April 19th with the mysterious feel, leaving fans highly anticipated to what this new era is going to sound like. Plus, we have pop star Dua Lipa coming back with radical optimism on May 3rd. The amazing Billie Eilish releasing Hit Me so Hard and Soft on May 17th. Then 21 Pilots continuing their notable story with Clancy on May 24th. I mean, all of these artists releasing in the span of just a few months? We are truly being fed. With all these amazing releases, we still have to cover what's going on in rap, which is currently filled with drama involving some of the biggest names in the industry. All of this is rooted in an album drop by Future and Metro Boomin, We Don't Trust You. The album was filled with shots towards J. Cole and Drake. It started when Kendrick Lamar's verse on Like That referenced Drake and J. Cole's song, First Person Shooter, where a lyric called themselves the big three of the industry. He dismissed this by saying, it's just big me, then went on to continue to trash Drake as the song progressed. 
This led Cole to a surprise drop album, Might Delete Later, including the song Seven Minute Drill, harshly and successfully firing back at Kendrick's comment. However, feeling like he damaged his spirit, he has since apologized and retracted his diss, pulling the song off streaming services. It seems like maybe the beef is being squashed, or is it? I mean, we still haven't gotten a direct response from Drake, and there's no way he can let that slide. Talking about all this drama has me fired up. On that note, we gotta talk about the intense competition happening in sports lately. These past few weeks are the most I've ever seen people on social media talk about college women's basketball, and for good reason. During this year's NCAA championships, more people tune into the women's game than the men's for the first time ever. The Iowa, the women's Iowa over South Carolina game drew a record break, breaking 18.87 million views. Meanwhile, the men's UConn vs. Purdue matchup drew 14.82 million. This could be to, due to star players gaining attention like Caitlin Clark or Angel Reese. However, don't get me wrong, the men's basketball game still produced tough matchups. The UConn Huskies are national champions once again, defeating Purdue in the final match. They're the first to win back-to-back -back since 2007. Notable players like Tristan Newton led the way for the Huskies with 20 points, 7 assists, and 5 rebounds. As for the turnout of the women's championship, the South Carolina Gamecocks defeated the known rival Iowa in a fierce game. The Gamecocks' Tessa Johnson had 19 points and Camila Cardoso had 15 as the team dominated the game. South Carolina had a clean sweep by having the 10th perfect season in the history of Division I women's basketball. And if all this information doesn't intrigue you enough, I invite you to watch the feature games next season. I swear you'll be at the edge of your seat. So wait, how did we all get here? With that being said, thank you guys so much for joining us. We covered a lot of news and we hope you guys enjoyed. With that being said, that's a wrap.